sure you've had enough of this life. yourself go Cause everybody cries And everybody hurts Sometimes Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out the fantastic REM song, Everybody Hurts. It's a really, really nice one if you're getting into some finger style. It's basically easy chords. There's a few uh, tricky little ones in the bridge there that require some power chords or some bar chords. Uh, I'm going to show you a really kind of simple way of approaching the finger style and then an exactly the same as the record kind of a version. So I'd recommend if you're just new to finger style, stick it to a nice simple kind of a pattern. Uh, and if you're a bit more advanced along that particular path, then you can have a go at doing the uh, the way that I just played for the little intro there, which is the same as the original recording. Lovely, lovely song. There's a few different layers as well going on, which I'll give you a sneaky little look at as well that can kind of spice it up if you've got a two guitar thing going on. Uh, so let's start off by having a look at the chords and keeping it real simple. Um, it's important that you understand as well, this song is in 6-8 time. Okay, so what 6-8 is, is two groups of three. So you have two strong pulses, right? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, the reason that's important when I'm going to go through now with you a real simple kind of chords version, and just we're just going to be strumming the chords, I'm going to be strumming twice per bar because there's two strong pulses in each bar, okay? So the first chord that we're going to need is a, a D chord. The second chord is a G chord. Now there's quite a few different ways of playing G and the one that's used on the original recording is the, the kind of the four finger G. So you're using your third fret, second fret, open, open, third fret, third fret. So using your third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings there on the third fret. You don't have to do that particular G, but uh, that's the one that's on the record and it's probably the one that I'd recommend that you, uh, that you start off with. So uh, we got two bars of D first, so it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and then to G, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it does that again for the intro, okay? Here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, and now we've got the verse, so D, when the day is long. And then to G. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. And the D. The D is yours to G. One, two, three, four, five, six. D. When you're D, you've had a G. One, two, three, four, of this D. Hang G, and we got this. You didn't really hear it too well because I was strumming there. But what we've got is a G to a G with an F sharp bass. Okay, you really notice that when you're picking to walk down to get from the G chord to the E minor. You could leave it out, you know, if you found it really difficult. But it's not a difficult chord to play. Going from your G, you just want to put your first finger over onto the second fret of the thicker string. That's it, all of the rest of it stays the same, and then we're going to a regular old E minor chord. So let's pick it up from the chorus, which is the E minor, so it's going E minor. Don't let yourself go to A. Back to E minor. One, two, three, four. Cause everybody cries. One, two, three, four, five, six, E minor. Everybody hurts four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes 
Okay, so it's really important, even though I was just strumming there, sometimes I was just worried that you might be hearing it as in 4-4, four, four, but you've got to remember it's got that pulse at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because it really makes a difference to kind of how you feel it. So that's pretty much all of the chords for the whole song, except for the bridge. Bridge has got a couple of interesting uh, chords going on now. There's a few different approaches uh, that you might choose to use, and the one that I recommend that you use, which sounds most like the record, is to play power chords. So it's going from an F sharp, don't throw your hand onto a B power chord and then back to F sharp and then to a B again B5 power chord they're both on the second fret back to F sharp don't throw your hand and then onto a B that moves up one fret to C which is at the third fret don't feel like you're a G C, 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 and then there's a G with a B bass to an A or an A minor. Then there's another longer stop, and then we're back into another verse. So uh, on the original recording, each chord is just played once, really. There's a couple of additional strums, but essentially it's just played once with a bit of distortion, a power chord, and just left to ring out. So don't throw your hand. Do. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. One. Two. It's kept really, really simple. Um, and you could choose to do that. If you wanted to do kind of more of an acoustic -y version, you could choose to play kind of full bar chords, but of course that requires knowing full bar chords, which is kind of a bit beyond beginner thing. Power chords, I think, is a suitable kind of beginner level thing. Full bar chords, a little bit more tricky. Um, if you wanted to, though, if you're into that kind of, if you've reached that point in your playing where you can do your full bar chords, you could be using an F sharp, regular just F sharp major chord, even an F sharp seven kind of works. I think personally I like the sound of just a regular F sharp, not the 7, but I think on the record I can hear something, maybe a keyboard adding in that, that flat 7. Um, so you could be using F sharp or to, and to a B minor chord. Okay, so F sharp to B minor. It's kind of nice kind of chord change that because it's the same shape, just everything moved down the street. And then when it goes to the C, you could go back to using open chords, particularly if you wanted to stay with a finger style thing for the bridge, you might want to go for that. But I do think it sounds nice to have the bridge a little bit different to the rest of the song uh, and go into just playing the power chord -y thing. So um, that's all of the chords now for the tune. So let's get in and talk about the finger style. So let's start off with a really nice, easy beginner finger style pattern here and then gradually develop it into the one that's on the original recording. Now what we're going to be doing is assigning the first three strings to specific fingers. Okay, so first finger is always going to play the third string. Second finger is always going to play the second second string and third finger is always going to play the thinner string. So if I say finger one, it's going to be playing the third string. If I said string three, first finger is going to be playing it, okay? I'm generally going to be referring to finger numbers though. So finger one, finger two, finger three and thumb. Now thumb is going to move around a bit because it needs to play the bass notes of the chords in this initial beginner's version anyway. So what we're going to be doing, the pattern that we're going to be playing is going to be thumb playing the bass note, which for the D chord is going to be the fourth string. So hold, it, hold yourself down a D chord and then play thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, second finger, first finger. That's one bar worth of finger style because that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the first thing that you want to practice before you do anything else is literally getting used to those fingers, nice and slowly, being able to play those strings on your D chord. Don't worry if it takes you a little bit of time to do it. Now some people like using an anchor finger. My little finger's too short to do that. It cramps my hand to, but there's a lot of great guitar players I can't control my fingers if I do that. So there's a lot of great guitar players that use little finger resting on the on the actual body of the instrument. I can't do it. it. It makes my fingers go really weird. But if your little finger is long enough and you can do that comfortably, feel free to do it. It's definitely not a bad thing. I don't do it, but that doesn't mean it's not right for you. And that's what you want to get going on first of all, is just getting this pattern really nice and smooth. Try not to let it get lumpy and uneven. Try and get it so it's got a real nice one, two, three, four, five, six. 
kind of rolls along this sort of pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. And once you've got that, you want to try changing to a G chord. Now when you change to the G, the fingers are going to stay exactly the same, but the thumb is going to move over and play the thicker string. Otherwise it's exactly the same. One, two, three, four. The actual pattern that you're going to need for the intro and for the verses is two bars on the D, so twice through on the D, there's a second bar, and then onto the G. And that's your first task, is to try and make sure you can get those nice D to G changes. You don't want any sort of stop between them. Okay, you've got to try and keep that pulse nice and even. So the first break in the pattern comes at the end of the verse going into the chorus where we have that little bass walk down where it's going from the G to the G with the F sharp bass and down into our E minor chord for the chorus. Now there's a few different options here. The one that I normally recommend for beginners is to go thumb, one, two, and then thumb, one, two. Okay, so you're just moving the bass note over, you've just got a change of the pattern. Thumb, one, two, thumb, one, two. And then you're onto the E minor chord where you're back to the same pattern again. Thumb, one, two, three, two, one. And then again onto the A chord. Pattern stays the same, but now thumb is reaching over to the fifth string, which is the A note. E minor. It's going to be the thumb's going to be playing the thicker string. You're going to do that twice. Then to the A. Thumb's going to be playing the fifth string. Back to E minor. Okay, and at the, uh, on the A there, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you're back into the verse sequence again. Okay, so just let's play once through that whole verse and chorus so you can see where there's that little break up with the G with the F sharp bass as well. So we start the verse. When your day's long. And then into the G. The night is yours alone to the G again. There we go. Back to D. When you're sure you've had enough, we're on the G. Thumbs move down to the thicker string. Here's the last time of this D. Down, thumb one two, thumb one two to the E minor. Don't let yourself go. E minor. Cause everybody cries. E minor. That's the version that I would recommend for most beginners to try and really nail down, trying to keep those fingers used to playing those individual strings, get used to the thumb moving around between those thicker strings to play the bass note. But what actually happens on the original recording is a little different, okay? It starts the same on the D. But when it changes to the G chord, the pattern changes to this. Sixth string, fourth string, third string, first string, second string, third string. Now there's a couple of different options for the fingering for this, like what fingers you use to play those strings. The one that I personally prefer is to play thumb on the sixth string, thumb again on the fourth string, first finger, third finger, second finger, third finger. Okay, so thumb, thumb, one, three, two, one. Thumb, thumb, one, three, two, one. It's just for the G chord. Okay, but I know a lot of students prefer to move their fingers over and go thumb, one, two, 
Then move the hand over and go three, two, one. Thumb, one, two. So thumb, uh, thumb is playing the usual bass note. First finger is now playing the fourth string. Second finger plays the third string. Everything moves over. Third finger plays the thinner string. Second finger plays the second string. First finger plays the third string. Okay, so you've got that as an option. Like I said, I prefer doing thumb, thumb, one, three, two, one. Just seems to fit better for me to have a little system that I stick to all the time. And I find moving the fingers over like that a little bit weird. However, one point where it does kind of have an advantage of moving the fingers over there is the step down, because even though on the original, uh, on the last version rather, I taught you, I taught you just playing thumb, one, two, first finger being uh, playing the G string and second finger playing the second string. The original recording is definitely sixth string, fourth string, third string. So moving the first and second fingers over that for that walk down is actually a lot easier than going thumb, thumb, one, thumb, thumb, one. However, if you've got used to the system of the thumb moving around, it's actually not very difficult at all to do that as a pattern. So it's up to you whether you do thumb, thumb, one, thumb, thumb, one, or you change over and you go thumb, one, two, thumb, one, two. Okay, this is the authentic version. Like I said, beginners should just keep those fingers where they are, get thumb playing the bass note, and not worry about this fancy stuff. Now, the chorus enters an, a, another level of complexity. Actually, the pattern that's going on for the chorus is sixth string, fifth string, fourth string, first string, second string, third string. And again, I like to stick to the pattern and go for thumb, three, two, one, thumb, 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 three, two, one. And then on the A chord, thumb, thumb, one, three, two, one. Thumb is obviously playing now the fifth string, fourth string, first finger, three, two, one. E minor, thumb, 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 first finger, three, two, one. Thumb, 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 three, two, one. A. But again, I've seen a lot of people over the years that prefer to go thumb, one, two, three, two, one. Thumb, one, two. And I find that a bit weird. And I have to really concentrate to make myself do that. But you know, it's really a personal taste what sort of finger style pattern you do. I always prefer, or nearly always prefer, keeping fingers one, two, and three on the thinner strings and using my thumb for the rest. But it's really something that you have to decide for yourself. I'm gonna show you one other additional part here which I think works really good, which is, uh, it's kind of a strumming overdub part and it's got a little walk down in it that I think sounds really nice. So the original one is an E minor chord, strum, strum, and then to an A. But then it's got, okay, it does this little it's third fret on the thicker string, second fret on the thicker string, and then it's strumming the E minor again. And if you're doing a finger style thing, it could be a nice thing to add in with the E minor to A. And then just bring the thumb over to play those bass notes again. You don't have to kind of mixing up two parts together. But that kind of line, that little movement down there, third fret, second fret, open string, it's a really kind of iconic part of the tune. I'm sure you're going to have a whole lot of fun playing this song, especially if you're new to the fingerstyle thing. I think it's a really great song for that. I still remember learning it as a kid and just enjoying just being able to play those simple chords and doing a fingerstyle thing that kind of sounded like the record was pretty cool fun. Uh, I must admit, I didn't learn the bridge for a long time. In fact, I wasn't even sure that there was a bridge, I think, when I first learned it. Um, I wasn't playing it in a band or anything like that, and the bridge was just like those horrible chords. But if you're into your power chords or you know how to do your power chords, you can just add them in using the power chords thing, and that way you've got the whole song and I do recommend trying to play along with the original songs as much as you can because it's a really good experience, you know, good, good for your time and learning about making
making sure that you don't slip, get you know, speed up or slow down too much. Um, and if you want to take it to that level where you do it exactly the same as the record, I think that's a really cool thing. It's good exercise there for the thumb if you're going to uh, keep the the fingers on the thinnest three strings and use your thumb there a lot. You know, it's a really good workout for your thumb this song if you're going to do it that way. So uh, I hope you'll have a lot of fun playing this one, and I'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.